Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about my Venusaur build. Venusaur is a special attacker that excels in poking and burst damage. He was heavily buffed in the last patch making him a strong pick for ranked games. Venusaur is however very immobile because he doesn't have any free dash and being an attacker also means he has low defensive stats so positioning in teamfight is very important. I've recently started playing Venusaur on my smurf account and has a 100% win rate from expert to ultra after 26 games before finally losing my first ranked game on Venusaur. Venusaur is extremely fun to play as he does so much damage from so far away so it's hard to punish him. If you enjoy a control mage playstyle then Venusaur is the perfect Pokemon for you. So without further ado, let's get started with the build. First off we have the Sludge Bomb. This ability is unlocked at level 5 along with your Ivysaur evolution so it's a huge power spike in the early game. Sludge Bomb is great for zoning as it slows and does tick damage. It also decreases the opposing Pokemon's special defense, so making it killing tanks much easier. The cooldown is relatively short at only 6 seconds, so you can have this ability on the field for majority of the fight. This ability can be upgraded at level 11 to further increase the AoE. Next, we have the Solar Beam. This ability is unlocked at level 7 and is your long range burst damage move. Solar Beam has a short wind up time before it can be cast, but if you synergize it well with your sludge, sludge Bomb Slow, then you're almost guaranteed to hit it. The base damage on this ability is extremely high, so try to poke the squishy backline whenever possible. Hitting a Sludge Bomb plus Solar Beam combo will easily get most Pokemon to 50% HP, even the tanks. This ability can be upgraded at level 13, which will reduce the cast time and the cooldown. Moving on, let's talk about the best health item for Venusaur. First off, we have the Wise Glasses. This will be your only damage item as it gives a lot of special attack and increase your special attack by 7% at item level 20. Overall, this item gives about 10% in increased damage and is more consistent and a better option than Shell Bell and Special Attack Spec. Next, we have our defensive items, which is the Buddy Barrier. Venusaur is relatively squishy so the HP from Buddy Berry is great for him. Furthermore, the 40% HP shield when casting your Night Move will heavily increase your survivability so you don't get one-shotted by Gengars and Zero Auras. Overall, survivability is the most important thing when playing Venusaur. The longer you survive, the more damage you'll do. Finally, we have the Focus Band. So most people will probably go for another damage item for Venusaur but that's not necessary. Venusaur's base damage is extremely high on Solar Beam, so it's better to prioritize survivability than damage. The Focus Band also gives defense and special defense as the base stats, which Venusaur heavily needs because his base stats are extremely low even at level 15. The HP regeneration from Focus Band also synergizes very well with the Buddy Barrier, so that's a bonus. Just remember to always position and survive the longest when playing Venusaur because as long as you live, you can potentially carry every game. Okay now, let's talk about the battle item. This is a very easy pick, just use the eject button to help out with even more survivability. You can also get some really clutch objective skill steals by ejecting in and solar beam from max range. Although risky, it's worth it for something like Dreadnought or Zapdos. Alright, that will be it for the build. Next, I'll be showcasing you a Venusaur gameplay and going over how to play on the early, mid, and late game. Let's get started. Alright, the early game is very simple, just start with your Razor Leaf and just clear down with your partner. Try to hit level 3 before the Aldinos. Here's a little trick you can do, you can actually hit both the monkeys with your Razor Leaf if you just position it like this. Now you're level 3, you're ready to contest the Aldino mid. And we actually secured it with the Jigglypuff auto, so that's pretty good. Now we're taking the trade here. Not really optimal since we already got the Aldino, we can continuously just close down trying to get level 4. Alright, this is a very simple case where we want the Aldino, so both of us should get very close to level 4. Once you hit level 4, there is a downtime of about 10 seconds of nothing happening. So just sit under the goal and try to heal up before the crap spawn at 9 minutes. 
Yeah, the crab spawn. I end up giving the crab to my Jigglypuff so she can hit level 4 before the B spawn. And then we can have a better chance of contesting. There is the B spawning. And we're trying to get as much as we can, but the Lucario damage is a little bit crazy, so we end up getting, not getting too much. However, I did somehow steal the big one, so that gives me level 5. And then we punish the Zera. I believe he misclicked his dash backwards, and he just tried for a score. So he just got punished pretty hard there. And we're fighting for another Audino. I think this one was pretty close. Yeah, just one out of attack away and end up losing it. But it's not a big deal since once you get level 5, you get the Ivysaur evolution. And your Sludge Bomb, you should be strong enough to pretty much contest all the poke and clear it extremely efficiently. Continues to clear, try to get level 7 before Dread spawn if possible, even if you're level 6, that's okay. Here our jungler is ganking, I try to help him, but unfortunately he dove a little bit too deep while we were clearing, so that was a pretty bad time to gank. But no worries though, we don't really get punished too hard, there really isn't much the enemy team can do, just get a free kill. And now I go for the crab. So on the second rotation of the jungle spawn, it's okay to take the crab, but never take it on the first rotation because your jungler needs that crab to get level 5. But any other than any other time you can take it for free. It doesn't really matter too much. And the Lucario damage chunked me for about half my HP with just two ability. But we got a lot of counter damage down as well. Now we're just contesting for the bees with our Slowbro here. We got a lot of it, surprisingly. And I end up getting level 7 here, which was pretty huge. As you can see, I just did a huge amount of chunk damage on the <laughs> Ninetales, putting her into lethal for our jungler to pick up. Right here, when you're playing Venusaur around Dread, try not to walk up too far because you'll get CC by the Dread. Just try to poke with your Sludge Bomb into Solo Beam whenever you can. The enemy team dive bomb ups here pretty hard and I ended up taking the Dread with an auto attack which really clutched it for us and that kind of snowballs into the mid game here. We look for a dive here, they're both they're only level 5, level 6 so it wasn't that bad but the Lucario came so now we gotta all run. I do a turnaround snipe here for a huge chunk of damage on their Ninetales, pretty much discouraged them from seriously chasing us. Now my next goal is to try to get level 9 because once I hit level 9, I evolve into my final evolution, Venusaur, and my base stat increased by quite a bit. Not only that, my Unite move also unlocks a level 9, so it's pretty much your biggest power spike in the game. Anyway, we're just chasing the Lucario because he dove in too deep. Unfortunately, I missed the Solar Beam. And I have to ulti here or use my Unite move just because I need the shield. And if I didn't, I pretty much will die. But because I did, we end up cleaning him up. And we get a huge bonus of score here. 30, 30, 40. So we pretty much just overcap this by 20 points. The Zera dive in a little bit de too deep here. And we get punished. But yeah, if you have frontlining for a Venusaur, that's also great. Because then he can just do free damage without having to worry about dying at all. We got the B secure. It's all good. More camps are up. Let's continuously clear that. Here I see that the Rotom is coming up as well, so I'm making the trip top. When you get your Solar Beam and uh, Sludge Bomb combo, most of the time you can clear the crabs, just Solar Beam. Uh, Sludge Bomb first into Solar Beam here, and then it should just instantly die. And we're gonna try to look for another fight. I'm gonna throw our Sludge Bomb just to zone them, and a huge chunk of damage on the Gardevoir. Unfortunately, I got flanked by the Ninetales. I flashed her ulti, but I think she just buffered it so she can't really cancel it. Here, the game's going pretty great for us. We also got the Rotom. And now I'm level 11. I get to upgrade my Sludge Bomb, which increases the range of the AoE. And we crashed the Rotom here, I believe. So I ended up using my ulti, didn't really do too much. I was hoping to get a much more better ulti than that, but it is what it is. I mean, we got the chunk of damage and we end up killing them. And unfortunately, we did not crash the Rotom, however, but it's okay because the Rotom can put pressure towards the next tower. So if you can somehow 
cap the goal before the Rotom hits it, then you have your Rotom pretty much up for the next goal. Here I'm just clearing, there's really no point of forcing second goals. I really don't di like diving a second tier goal, so I'm just gonna farm and get strong. My next objective is the next uh, Dreadnought spawn, and then continuously to save my ulti for Zapdos if possible. So yeah, when there is stuff, you know, nothing happening on the map when both objectives are down, your goal is to just search around and just farm whatever you can. Because you need to reach your next power spike, which is level 13, you get your solar beam upgraded. Here I'm just hovering for the next dread spawn. Just doing whatever camp I can, just sludge bomb into solar beam, pretty much just clears it instantly. Really effortlessly to uh, clear once you get your combo set up. Once again, sludge bomb into solar beam, it just dies. Here I think we were trying to look for poke damage before dread spawn because we have a little more time. And that solar beam didn't hit but it doesn't really matter. Because our team is just diving in, we drop the ult. Pretty much that ult zoned off the Gardevoir and the... Zero R. I was hoping to just get the insta kill on him, but the shield from the goal is just a little bit too much. We did get a huge cap though, so we got a lot of points down. Here I ended up sniping the Gardevoir while she was contesting for the B, so that kind of opened up the Dreadnought for us for free. So I'm just gonna start it, noticing my team is gonna come and back me up very soon, and we go pretty much the Gardevoir and Zero die, so they just barely spawn now. Okay, the Lucario dashes in, really poor mistake from him because he didn't really do that much damage to me. I'm actually pretty tanky with my build, so I end up securing the Dreadnought before it despawns. And now, my goal is to just save my ulti for this Zapto spawn, and that should just help us win the game. Yeah, they're actually doing Zapdos surprisingly, so I get a huge solo beam on both their frontliners, and that just melted them. Now I'm just gonna throw out another one, chunk out their Lucario. They're still trying to do Zapdos for some reason, I don't know why, but they're kind of leashing it first, which is fine. Dropping another Solar Beam, huge chunk out the Gardevoir. End up having Flash there just in case they get like Gardevoir ulted or something. So we end up killing them all, and now the Zapdos is pretty much just free and secured. So that's pretty much how you want to play the fight. Notice that um, most of the time I'm just sitting behind someone and just doing like max range Solar Beams and whatnot. So the game is pretty much over at this point, I'm, we're just getting scores with the Zapdos, the enemy team doesn't really have any chance to come back. The zero ultimate, so I'm just gonna pop my ulti as well, it's whatever. Alright, here the most optimal play is to just back and defend, but I see my team, they're just pretty much acing the enemy team under the fountain. So I'm just gonna run up and try to score a 22 here. Alright, get double point for 44, and now I just kite backwards. Like, notice I'm not like forcing any auto attacks when I'm low HP. I'm just dropping solar beams and dropping sludge bombs whenever I can. Here I end up backing because I don't really have too much points, and dying doesn't really make any sense. So the game is pretty much over at this point. That's how, um... How games should end if you play a control mage perfectly, where you just secure all the objectives. And if you're over leveled, then it's really hard for the enemy team to punish you because they just simply cannot kill you at all. So, there you go. That will be the Venusaur gameplay. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. This Pokemon is extremely strong right now for rain games and I've been playing him a lot with a really high win rate. And that will be all for this video guys. Thanks again. I'll see you guys next time.